Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is a Bangalore style wedding, Eid or Dawat special chicken dum biryani. I'm going to show you how to make it easy step by step with few ingredients. Hope you love this recipe of mine. So keep watching. To begin with the chicken masala or the acne masala, heat a vessel and into that I'm going to add 250 ml of oil. Once hot, I'm going to add the whole spices, one cinnamon stick, three pods of cardamom, three green chilies. Then I'm going to add six thinly sliced onions. Here I've taken medium sized onions, a little salt to help in cooking the onions faster. Now give a good stir for the salt to dissolve well and cook the onions covered on high heat till they turn soft. Here you can see the onions have turned soft. I'm going to fry them more in this oil until they turn their color to light brown. Here I don't like deep frying the onions. I'm just going to fry them until they turn light brown. Once the onions are done, I am going to add 4 tablespoons of freshly ground ginger garlic paste. I have a video of this on my channel. Shall link it in the description box below. Fry the ginger garlic paste until the raw smell is completely gone. And this would take around 2 minutes. Once the ginger garlic paste is cooked well, I am going to add a tablespoon of ghee to enhance the flavor. Then goes in the spices, 3 4 tablespoon of red chilli powder, half tablespoon of Kashmiri red chilli powder, 3 4 tablespoon of coriander powder, a big pinch of cumin seeds, 1 4 tablespoon of garam masala powder, handful of fresh mint leaves, a handful of finely chopped fresh coriander leaves. Now fry well till the raw smell of the spices reduces. This will take around 30 to 40 seconds. Once the spices are fried well, I am going to add the chicken. Here I have taken 1 kilo of chicken. Fry the chicken well in this onion and spices mixture for good 2 minutes on high heat. Now you can see the chicken is mixed and well coated with the spices. I'm going to add 6 to 7 tablespoons of curd. Mix well and cook the curd until it releases its fats. Once the curd is cooked well, I'm going to add the potatoes. Here I've added baby potatoes, but do add 3 to 4 large peeled and half cut potatoes. Mix well. Then goes in 4 medium sized thinly sliced tomatoes. I always use semi-ripe tomatoes and have them thinly sliced so that they turn quickly soft. Mix and cook well until they turn soft. Once the tomatoes are turned soft, I am going to add biryani essence. Here goes in a cap full of biryani essence and a teaspoonful of kevra essence. This gives nice aroma to the biryani the same way what you get in the restaurants and during the weddings. Mix well, check for salt and add if required. Adding 1 4th cup of water as I did not see more water being released from the chicken. Mix well. Now turn the heat to low. Cook covered until the chicken is cooked 70%. Takes around 10 minutes. While the chicken is getting cooked, here I am going to make the rice. You can see the water is already boiling well. I have taken around 3 liters of water which is around 15 to 20 cups of water. Add salt as per taste. But do remember to add a little extra than usual. Few drops of lemon extract, teaspoon of melted ghee, handful of frozen green peas which is optional, fresh mint leaves and some spices. Here I've taken three cloves, one cinnamon, pinch of cumin seeds, two cardamom pods and two cubes of Maggi wedge soup cubes. Stir well until the soup cubes are dissolved and allow the water to get another boil. While the water is getting a boil, I am going to keep the rice ready. Here I have taken 5 cups of rice. This is Kesar Kali rice which costs around 79 to 82 rupees per kilo. The total quantity of rice is 1 kg plus 1 cup. Wash it well and add to the boiling water. Give this a good stir to remove if any lumps of rice have formed. I am also going to remove a teacup of stock and reserve it for later use. 
Now lightly cover the vessel and cook the rice for good 5 to 8 minutes. If you are using basmati rice then it takes around 8 to 10 minutes depending on the quality and brand of the rice. After 8 minutes you can see the rice is boiling well. The rice has come to the surface of the water. Give this a quick stir and check the rice. It should be soft outside as that one grain when pressed and does not mash. Now time to drain the rice and keep it aside. Let's check the chicken masala. Here you can see a lot of oil on the surface of the chicken. Need to separate this oil. So, I'm going to transfer the oil into another bowl and keep it aside. Into the chicken, I'm going to add juice of half a lemon and give that a good mix. To layer the biryani, you have taken a heavy bottomed vessel and I'm going to transfer all the chicken masala into this vessel. Rinse the vessel with a little water and add that to the chicken masala. Spread the chicken pieces evenly, making sure the chicken touches to the bottom of the vessel. Adding half ladle full of reserved oil, few mint leaves, few coriander leaves, and now topping the chicken masala with three fourth of the drained rice. Lightly spread the rice. Do not press. I usually don't mix the rice with the masala, but this time I wanted to give it a try. But my feedback would be not to mix. This is two pinch of lemon food color mixed with one fourth cup of milk, adding half of it over the rice. Then goes in rest of the rice. Now lightly spread the rice evenly. Remember, do not press the rice, or else it would take time to build the steam in it. Then goes in the remaining oil. I always add in the corners first and then to the center of the vessel. Adding the remaining food color, coriander leaves, mint leaves, 2 teaspoons of melted ghee, and then the remaining reserved stock. This is added just to build in the steam. Cover with the plate. Here I've covered the plate or the lid with a damp cloth so that the lid gets tightly fixed. And doesn't move, which would help in locking the steam inside. I'm going to heat this on high flame for three minutes, and then on the lowest flame for twenty minutes. After that, turn off the flame and allow it to rest for ten minutes. Now it's time to serve the biryani. Let's serve. See how each grain is separate and flavorful. I hope you found this video very helpful and you like this recipe of mine. Would be happy to hear from you. Do give this recipe a try and share your valuable feedback in the comment section below. Share and subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much for watching. See you soon on another video. Take care. Bye bye.